Hey guys, this morning I'm going to clean out the filters and I'll show you how I do that and walk you through the issues that I was having with all of my tomatoes cracking, uh, the hydroponic tomatoes, and tell you what I did to fix it. So first the tomatoes. Uh, I was having 100% cracking on everything except for the cherries, but any large type tomato was cracking very aggressively. And I'm not talking about your standard um, large tomato cracks that you get just because of their size. I'm talking these things were splitting um, about halfway through the tomato uh, or halfway down the side of the tomato often in two or three locations. It was com they were completely unmarketable. Um, everything with tomato cracking, soil, soilless, my understanding is it comes down to water typically. So there's a couple variables there but it's still those, those variables come down to the availability of water. So um, obviously if uh, your tomatoes go for an extended period of time without water and then they get a lot of it, uh, those fruits go through a growth spurt and anything that is hardened off externally, the inside of that tomato grows and it cracks. Alternatively, uh, nutrients in, in hydroponics can affect the availability of the water. Um, if you have a fluctuation in your EC or something like that, the plant may be uptaking more water than it was and those fruits can crack from that. So uh, all that aside, I was running, just a quick recap, hydroponically has nothing to do with aquaponics. Hydroponic Dutch buckets with uh, Hydroton and not Perlite. Um, and I had, okay, so I was running the water 24-7 and everything was cracking. So. Started asking questions, started reading everything I could, and followed a few different suggestions from people that I hold in very high regard. Um, those suggestions didn't solve my problem. Uh, I went to timed waterings. That didn't solve the problem. So I stopped, think, I stopped reading, stopped asking questions, and just watched the plants. And I noticed that even in the hottest part of the day in the afternoon, uh, the plants never demonstrated any stress, even after I moved over to timed waterings. So, I said it must be too much water. It has to be too much water. So what I did was cut all the way back to two timed waterings, 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night, basically sunrise and sunset, uh, and that solved all the problems. I don't have any issues with cracking it. I mean, of course you'll get the occasional crack, but nothing, nothing like it was. Um, so in this situation, because it is the coolest time of the year here, the plants just had way more water than they needed. And even now on the two times waters, waterings, the foliage does not demonstrate any stress, uh, but the fruits have stopped cracking. So I think what was happening was when it does warm up in the afternoon, when I was flushing them, you know, water and nutrients, they'd go through that growth spurt in the warm sun and the fruit would just give up. I mean, all that water was being pushed to the fruit I mean, I'm not a plantologist or anything, but it's kind of common sense that if the foliage isn't transpiring, doesn't need any fluid, um, then it, the plant, if the roots insist on taking it up, it's going to get pushed to the fruit. Um, and that seemed to be what was happening. Um, yeah, so that's that, guys. Uh, just cut back on the water, maybe, if uh, you're experiencing something similar. Uh, obviously, I played with the EC. I played with the nutrients. Uh, none of that helped it, so I was able to rule out slowly over the course of a couple of weeks what was going on. Uh, I'm going to finish my cup of coffee and then we'll do the filters and real quick I'll tell you that uh, I am going to invest in biosecurity on the grow house. It's, it's just got to be done. I, I just said a couple of weeks ago or three weeks ago that water was or insects were not a problem. They are a problem um, and I'm losing a significant percentage of marketable product because uh, the birds are eating the tomatoes, the, the caterpillars and beetles are getting into the basil, um, and a lot of this stuff is going on at nighttime. So I haven't even 100% identified exactly what it was, what they are. I have tried uh, some applications of neem oil, wood vinegar, and it helps, but it's time consuming to go through and spray everything. Uh, and it's not still not really doing the trick. I'm not happy with it. So we'll go ahead, um, get the biosecurity up. I'll be using a, an insect net that'll still allow significant or, or adequate airflow through the growing area. Um, but 
With that, I'll also still have problems with aphids and thrips. Um, but it's, it's it, the caterpillars and beetles alone are doing most of the damage. The, the other stuff I can control. Uh, the other issue that it will solve is the wind. The wind is tearing through the growing area, it's tearing plants out of towers, and uh, I've been using rubber bands to hold them in place, and that works well, but it's uh, time consuming again, and it's just one more thing that I have to go through and do. The, the rubber bands break down pretty quickly because they're not, they're not good quality, and they'll break within a couple of weeks, and then the plant's right back where it was laying on the ground this wind is blown it out of the tower the wind through here is really strong guys even though tomatoes I've got tomatoes that are strung up tomato plants in Dutch buckets with two liters of water in the bottom and it's got 15 liters of hydroton in it and those tomato plants literally act like sails and they'll lift that bucket up off the rail and set it down I've walked out here and had like five buckets lifted up off the rails and moved over, which means when they were being fed, it was just running on, on the concrete uh, because the drain lines were actually, and the drain lines also sit down inside the drain about an inch. So it's not like the buckets can just fall off their supports. They have to be lifted up uh, or at least stressed over enough sideways for that one inch drain to come out of its hole. Uh, that's how strong the wind is. So the insect netting, will slow that down as well and I think it will alleviate most if not all of the wind related issues. Alright guys, I'm going to start cleaning these out I'll show you how I do it. The first question that a lot of you are going to have is what are you doing with the water? Where is it going? You know the system separated um, and you know that this all the fish in is going somewhere else to be further digested and it's entertained within the plant portion. I can't answer that question for you because I don't own the rights to what I've used here. If you want to get those questions answered, Aquaponics Thailand now has informational distribution rights to this setup. I will only say this, it's worth your time. It's worth your time because there's too many advantages to ignore to the separation of, of, of the fish and the plants. So, I'll just leave you with that, but that's up to you guys. I can't help you with it. All right. So, first thing I do is turn off the water that's leaving the filter and turn off the water that's coming in. And I do that by cap, putting a, literally putting a cap on the exit. And I'm going to remove the feed, which is feeding towards the bottom. And I'm going to pull that off, turn it upwards because everything is flowing into these by gravity. So it's like putting a big standpipe on it for temporarily. Uh, once that's done, I'll pull out the filter pads and take them over and hose it off. I'm not gonna film any of the hosing off because just hosing off the filter pad. But getting all the large uh, shit, literally, um, will we'll wash all that off. All right, so like I said, I'm just gonna take the inlet None of this stuff is glued, guys. And then, obviously, just stand it up like yay. And now there's no water coming into or leaving this particular filter. It's been taken offline, per se. Um, from here, I'll pull the filter padding out, and then we'll flush it. And this is the part that I really don't enjoy at all. Um, it's very difficult to, to enjoy this. It's dirty, they're heavy, and it's full of fish. Uh, I'm running two kinds of filter padding in here to serve as a little bit of additional mechanical filtration. Um, they're not high speed, it's, I just bought it in bulk and cut it to size and not all of the water is being forced to go through the pad, a little bit can go on the side of the pad. Um, this is a real heavy, like a mate, it's a plastic, uh, it's probably about an inch and a half, two inches thick. And this stuff is awesome because it can handle voluminous flow of water. Um, it'll allow the water to pass, but it still does a good job of filtering. And then on top of that, I have a, a finer filter pad, which is, I think those are designed actually for saltwater aquarium applications. All right, so I'm gonna go throw these over here where we spray them off. 
and then we'll flush it. All right, so I have a really large valve down here. It's a three inch uh, high pressure valve. I'm gonna open that up and that's gonna pull the water out of the, out of the filter. And then I will use this broom to start scrubbing any crap off the side of the filter as the water's draining out of it. Most of the stuff will be sitting on the bottom, but there's a little bit of buildup on the sides. Um, and of course, there's horizontal PVC that's coming out and protruding from the span pipe. Some of the waste will collect there. But this has proven to be the most efficient method of really getting the crap out of these filters. And cleaning them thoroughly. The, um, the agitation I was doing before and flushing just a little bit of the filter. Um, still left obviously a ton of stuff suspended in the water. Some of this stuff goes anaerobic pretty quick. It'll start floating and it wasn't doing a good job of really getting all the stuff that the filter was collecting out of the system. So uh, now I do uh, clean two filters per day and flush them completely and then the next day I'll clean the other two and then come back to the first two. Okay, and once the filter is uh, full, or I'm sorry, empty, you can see that it's nice and clean. There's no solids in there. Uh, I didn't get a, a good shot of the filter before, but I promise you there is lots and lots of fish poop. And now we can just sort of turn the filter back on or bring it back online. We'll let this uh, refill, and then we'll put our uh, filter padding back onto the back into the filter that's really all there is to it guys pretty much uh, wraps it up it's not hard it's just uh, it's just not very much fun and when you have to do it every day uh, you become tired of it very quickly so I usually do this first thing right after I feed the fish in the morning this is what I do that way it's done and I don't have to think about it until the next day uh, I went through and trimmed everything. I guess I should give you guys a tomato update. Um, lots of brandy wines. Some of them are a little bit smaller than I'd like, but it's a decent size. They're acceptable. A lot of people can't eat, sit down, and utilize an entire brandy wine. Uh, you know, if they're half kilo or a kilo. Uh, the big beef are doing very well. These are romas that are kind of determinate romas kind of taking over the lane probably need to get some more string in there and tie them up but the big beef are doing as you'd expect uh, tons of fruit good size um, the birds are getting to them which is great see like this is uh, totally unusable now well I mean I could use it but I sure wouldn't ask anyone else to um, so this is another reason why the insect netting is keep the birds out as well if I pick them about this stage, uh, I sort of uh, secure the fruit. Like I don't, the birds aren't going to bother it quite yet. So if I grab it around this stage um, and put it in the fish house, it's fine. But we'll go through here shortly and pick all this. There's probably a good, I don't know, five kilos anyways of fruit. Here's a nice big one. That's probably maybe close to 300 grams. The sun golds are very, very productive as well. They're kicking out, I think I've got 35 plants and they're kicking out about a kilo to a kilo and a half per day right now. Um, very, very productive and uh, they're pretty, pretty popular as well. People really seem to enjoy the flavor. Uh, I've got a bunch of new tomatoes that I'm trying. Okay, so here's why there's a bunch of empty buckets. Uh, I had told you that I was growing a variety that was called 
beefsteak. I know beefsteak is a category of tomatoes, but the actual variety was called beefsteak. And I had started some from saved seed, and then those ended up being, it, it ended up being a hybrid, and I got one of the parents, okay? But I was told by the seed company that it was an open pollinated heirloom. So then I started new plants from new seed. I ordered new seed, said, all right, no big deal. Can't use the save seed, but I really liked how they performed previously, so I'll grab some, some more. And uh, that, those seeds were also bad. Like I got some other kind of tomato that were ripened very small, and the taste was horrendous. Um, it, again, it was a faulty hybrid, I'm assuming. So. I've gotten away from those completely and of course I'm not going to order from that company anymore. Um, but I've got some other stuff, they're brandy wine hybrids um, and just a few other different kinds of hybrids that have been crossed with heirlooms that uh, might end up being pretty cool. So they're over there on the propagation table and we'll start putting those in when they're ready to go. Hey guys, before I forget I want to show you these grow bags. I got these from Rob Bob in Australia and uh, Rob was super cool about shipping them to me and uh, it worked out really well. Very pleased with them. They're nice and sturdy, they come in different sizes, they're made out of recycled water bottles and they've got these handles which are awesome because you can walk through and move them or pick them up. And they're very sturdy. I've got 20 total bags, I've got 10, uh, I think they call them 5 gallons and then there's 10, I think they're 7 gallons. Um, I think they'll do really well for things like peppers. This is the Thai version of the grow bag, like the most cost-effective, readily available solution. Um, and they do work well. There's nothing wrong with them, but you can't, you're not going to get the lifetime or the uh, ability to move them around. Eventually, they'll start breaking down, I would imagine. Uh, I haven't ever used them, so I'll be able to tell you more later. But they're cheap and that's nice. This is pretty much it. Every day I get covered in fish shit and it's really fun. Uh, as always, thank you for watching. I appreciate your comments more than anything else. So please do leave me a comment uh, if you want to see some video on a future thing. I still have a lot of suggestions from the last video where you guys were awesome about giving me things that you wanted to see. I'm trying to work through those. Um, and I did do a Facebook as well. It's, uh, I'll put the link in the description or whatever if you want to check that out and befriend me. And then you can also send me messages on there. And sometimes I put up random pictures or whatever of stuff going on around here. Alright, thanks. And we'll see you soon.